this setup right here. It looks awesome and it's under a thousand bucks. This thing looks also fantastic. 500 bucks, but I want to know what you can do for under a hundred. So I did some Googling. I found a couple different cameras some point and shoot some from Sony, some from Canon. I'm a Canon fanatic, but it's a little bit too expensive. So I made my way over to eBay. Boom. Under a hundred bucks ordered express delivered and boom, 94 bucks. Here we go. Is this going to look okay? Or is it going to look terrible? I have no idea. <laughs> Let's find out. I wasn't afraid to do that because it's under a hundred bucks. I'm I was gonna say this is really small. My G7X fits in my pocket just fine, but it still has a little bit of thickness to it. This is like probably the size of my wallet. Uh, actually, my wallet's still smaller. It's empty. Don't judge me. I get paid on Tuesday. Let's check this out. I'm gonna record for a second. I haven't seen the footage yet, so I have no idea if it looks decent. This could be my new vlogging camera, guys. Let's see what we got. How's this footage look? Please don't look terrible. This is how the footage looks from a $94 camera. Oh my God, it's so shaky. A small camera mixed with no image stabilization. Ooh, gonna be a little bit tough. Colors don't look terrible, especially considering the price point of this thing. Let's try this again with less good lighting. Okay, I got that light off. Now this probably looks like some old school nasty camera. I'm trying to hold it as stable as I can, but I drink too much coffee and I think I have ADHD. It doesn't look as bad as like a flip phone camera, but it looks kind of like like the second gen iPhone or something like that. The windows give it this like really ugly streak. Before anything, we gotta fix this stabilization issue. But wait a second, if you're spending a hundred dollars of the camera, you're probably not gonna have a four hundred dollar gimbal. I think we're gonna have to value meal this thing. Let's head over to the 99 cent store. Probably the only place I can go and buy anything with this wallet. We are headed to the 99 cent store. Hopefully, we can find some salvation for this camera here. Now I'm gonna to try to get some awesome footage of Steve with this camera. I got this little tripod thing attached to it, which should make it a little bit bigger and heavier. So hopefully it's gonna look a little bit more stable than it did before. So here we go. Look really cool. <laughs> So that should have helped a bit just having that extra size, but this is where the pot comes into play. 99 cent pot. This was like 12 cents. This was like 20 something cents. Oh. When you don't have image stabilization, a little tiny camera is very hard to hold stable because it's so easy to just like, you know, shake things around. Bigger cameras, you don't really need as much image stabilization because it's so big and heavy. This pot was the biggest, heaviest thing I was able to find at the 99 cent store. Plus, it already has this handy little hole in it. It's a quarter 20 screw, so that fits very nicely on the bottom of these cameras. In order for this camera to be shaky now, not only does it have to shake the camera, but it has to shake all this pot. I'm probably gonna be demonetized on YouTube for saying the word pot so many times in a video. Still a little bit shaky. We're gonna make this even heavier by putting a brick into this pot while we hold this. This is gonna be the best handheld rig on the planet. Some bricks in here now, 30 cents per brick. Sometimes you gotta spend the money to get good stuff. So now this is much heavier. Now in, I'm gonna try to stabilize this in Adobe Premiere and see how smooth we can make this look. The issue with this is that the camera is not at the center of gravity. We might have to reconsider this for version two. In case the pot wasn't heavy enough, this bumper should do the trick. That's our camera car now. <laughs> What's this all about? What did that happen? Oh shoot, somebody hit my car. Good thing uh, Steve the mechanic here is here to fix it. Handheld rig, version two. You see all the flies flying around in there? <laughs> nice, sturdy, has a bunch of holes in it so we can mount it already. See how the lens fits right in the middle of the center of gravity? Perfect. It's also possible to have too much light. So to combat that, we use these ND filters. This one's the Polar Pro's quartz line. It's the top of the line one. Ooh, looks nice and crisp. This is worth two times more than this setup here. So remember those sunglasses we got? Let's customize them real quick. <laughs> 
<laughs> so now we have these sunglasses. Very stylish. This was literally the only pair of sunglasses at the 99 cent store, but it has a little bit of gradient, meaning it's darker up here and it becomes lighter down here. Not exactly what I was expecting, but hey, maybe we could even make this work. Some people use filters like this on purpose. So here's her lens. ND filter. I think it would be great if you just showed up to like someone's graduation. Everyone else like fancy like the DSLRs and you show up with this. Lighting's really harsh right now. It's coming from right above, but hopefully this ND filter will help a little bit with that. We're gonna switch over to this camera and film this training video. You're going down, fool. Welcome to day one of training with the potato. Jumping jack, ready? One, two. Now that is what I call a workout. When you're about to get in a fight with a big beefy mannequin like Bobby here, you always wanna try to avoid the fight. So we're gonna do a little practice on how to deter an attack. Hey, what's going on, man? Hey, I've got a YouTube channel. You wanna see it? This is a 12 minute video about camera settings. You wanna check, where are you going? That works 90% of the time, but when it doesn't, then it's time for combat. You disliked my last video? What, you're a cat person? You think Maddie Hapoya is a better YouTuber than me? You like Sony cameras better than Canon? What? <laughs> that is what I call a great training session. Now for that sequence, we added bars to the top and bottom. I also color graded some of the footage using my LUTs. And by the way, thanks to the awesome people over at Skillshare for sponsoring this episode. And we're gonna give away this camera when we're done with it. So stay tuned. Skillshare is an online community with thousands of online courses. What kind of courses you ask? They have a plethora of courses in business, technology, design, Kung Fu. No! Ugh. There's no Kung Fu. This is your first sponsorship. Are you trying to make them upset? No. Then stick to the script. Ugh. Okay, no, okay, no Kung Fu. If you sign up for an annual plan, that's less than $10 a month, which is a banging deal. You wanna learn everything there is to know about cameras, done. You wanna be a rapper, Psh, your boy took a class and now I spit fire. Head over to Skillshare and get a handle on making candles and sandals. She didn't like that. Sorry, I'll stop trying to be cool. But seriously, there's like classes on everything. Sandals, candles, all that. First 500 people to use my link in the description, you get the first two months free. And there's no commitment, so you can go and learn all that stuff for two months, and bounce with all that knowledge without paying a cent. But after those two months, you'll most likely stick around because there is so much knowledge to be learned from Skillshare. It's like YouTube's more intelligent, more successful brother. Go check him out, link in description. All right, back to the video. So we got this sweet skateboard at the 99 cent store. It wasn't 99 cents, but it was an amazing deal of 4.99, so I think we can splurge this time. All right, let's test this bad boy out. This is the worst skateboard I have ever seen in my life. It's weird, it feels like it gets stuck. I was pretty determined to only use accessories under $5, but man, after that, you know, I think I'm just gonna use my skateboard. So this is what a board should do, and this is what a $5 board does. Harry's gonna do a little bit more practice of riding this motorcycle here. We're gonna take everything we learned so far and basically try to apply it, try to get the best footage of Harry riding this motorcycle around this random parking lot. This thing is tough, but I think we got some shots that are pretty cool. Let's check it out. Now we're just collecting a couple of clean sound effects, so we're in a quiet environment. I'm only using this for sound right now. I'm not using this footage, I'm just getting sound out of this. Awesome, so we got our sound effects. We're gonna drop those in, do a little bit of sound design, drop in some music, do some color correction, stabilize it, do some digital slow motion, every trick in the book to try to make a cool little sequence. So here it is. Ugh. <sighs> 
I don't know. What do you guys think? Did you think it looked cinematic? I think it looked all right considering that it was a hundred dollar camera, but it was definitely a lot of work to try to make this look somewhat decent. There were definitely times where I was like, oh man, this shot just looks too grainy or just doesn't look that good. And I would point this camera at the same shot and it would look much, much better. Not only that, but it's also only 720p and a really weak form of 720p. Like every single shot I was like, man, that shot could be a whole lot sharper. One of the biggest issues I had was that there's no manual controls on this thing. Literally the only thing you can control while shooting video is the white balance. That's it. And it never even tells you what the camera's doing. It never tells you the shutter speed, the ISO, anything like that. So it's just kind of like guesstimating what the camera's doing mechanically and hoping that it comes out good. Oh, and as I mentioned, we're doing a giveaway with this thing, but this might be the least exciting giveaway ever considering that this camera just does not look that good. Ooh, how about this? There, now it is a one-of-a-kind collector's edition vintage camera. <laughs> so yeah, if you want to just comment below and tell me what you want to shoot with it. Oh, and also, do you guys remember a while ago I did that Remove UK1 gimbal camera review and giveaway? One of the winners of that camera, I tried messaging him. I even called his school to try to get a hold of him. No answer. So if the Remove UK1 is something you're interested in, go down and comment below saying what you want to do with the Remove. You can win this camera from anywhere in the world, but the Remove U1 is a US only giveaway. I'm out of things to talk about. See you guys later. So many bugs in there.